Hey everybody, this is Jay Weaver from the New England Catching Camp. Just making a video blog entry today. Uh, the subject that I wanted to talk about today is is blocking, uh, and more specifically the sequence of the block and how we can better ourselves as catchers, um, and just understanding which step needs to go first and then each step after that uh, to accomplish our goal of stopping a ball, keeping it close, and being able to make a play on it. Um, the video clip that I've got up right now is actually of Yadier Molina, um, the catcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, certainly widely regarded as one of the uh, the best defensive catchers in the big leagues and certainly um, you know, one of, if not the best blocking catchers uh, out there. Um, something I've noticed over the past couple of years, though, is that there's something that Yadier Molina does on the balls that he's not successful blocking, um, that he does it actually consistently. And it's one of the reasons why... You know, there are some balls that get away from the best blocking catcher in baseball. Um, certainly no one's perfect, uh, but I actually believe that there's a way for Yadier Molina to be even better than he is. And I think if we can we can take a look at that and understand why that is, then you know those catchers who who aren't at that level yet, who haven't um, formed their consistent approach to blocking. Um, can kind of take something from that and continue to better themselves as well. So the clip I'm, I'm looking at is actually a promo video from the uh, the Cardinals website that I've pulled and um, and shows actually quite a few of uh, Molina's blocks. But the one, th the one issue that, that I see that Molina has on occasion, and again, it's not every time, uh, Molina is one of the, the most proficient blocking catchers in the big leagues um, in terms of you know, chances... Uh, um, chances that he's got to actually, you know, block a pitch and how successful he is during those chances. Um, but like I said, when it goes wrong, there's one thing that he does consistently, and and, and it's very simple. Um, obviously, we want our hands moving first to the ball. Molina does a very good job of that, although he doesn't get it down to the ground, which is an, which is one reason why this why this doesn't um, why why he has a tendency on occasion to let balls get away from him. Um, he kind of tucks them into the midsection and allows gravity and friction to bring him back down to the ground and align himself with the ball. But you're talking about an incredible athlete with absolutely fantastic hand-eye coordination. Um, so, you know, he's able to process some things at a speed that, you know, normal catchers may not be able to. You know, certainly he is a special player. So... We'll kind of ignore the hands hitting the ground first um, for right now. Uh, we'll come back to that in a later post, that's for sure. Um, but you'll notice his hands driving to the ground first as his hips go. But one thing I want you to focus on right here, and I'll point my my cursor at it, is his uh, is his right knee. Is he's going? He's blocking a pitch to his right, and his right knee is going to actually hit the ground just before the right. Now, when this happens, when we collapse onto that outside knee, what it forces us to do is stop, uh, stop the direction, stop the rotation with our lower body and hips, um, which then, as a result, forces us to stop that rotation with our upper body. And that upper body is kind of going to end up um, leaking over top of that leg, or we're going to end up sliding a little bit in that direction. We won't come to a stop. We won't be able to halt that movement to to whichever side we're blocking to, which is obviously very important in keeping a pitch in front of us. If we're still moving in any direction, when the ball hits our body, we'll simply deflect it to that direction rather than absorbing its impact and energy. So you'll see, you'll notice right here that Yadier Molina, in these next few frames, continues going to his right. And you'll notice the ball kicking off to that side as well. So we'll back it up, we'll kind of play it through. And the ball kicks off to the side. Now, again, is it going to get that far away from no? But right now that ball's probably coming in at 45 or 50 miles an hour. Um, you get a pitcher up there throwing you know, 75, 80, 85 plus, that ball's going to rock it off of his chest in the direction that his body is still moving. Our, my goal is is to get that inside knee down to the ground. And there is a clip here of him actually doing that. Um, you can kind of you can kind of see the rotation from the back, getting back around the ball, um, having his chest turned back towards the back of home plate rather than his body continuing to glide, to slide on the ground towards his right side. I'll pull up that clip. A second, but I want to show you another angle. 
of him blocking. It's right here. So hands start down to the ground first. That's good. I don't like the fact that his thumb is out of his hand. You know, there's a good chance he's going to get hit one of these days. He's going to spend some time on the DL. You know, none of his fans, the Cardinals fans, nor the Cardinals organization is really going to be too happy with that. So certainly I would prefer that thumb be tucked inside the hand ever so gently just to make sure that it's not the thing that's getting hit. Um, but you also notice on this one a drastic cave downwards with that right knee. Um, and again, his body pretty much stops. It stops. You know, that lower body pretty much stops. The upper body continues to fade over top of that right leg. You'll notice right there, continues to fade over top. And he's kind of running into a brick wall. But because we're generating so much force and momentum with our lower body going in this direction, it's tough for our upper body just to kind of stop too. It's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to drift over that front leg, and when a ball hits your, your, your body moving in that direction, it's going to continue going in that direction. We're going to deflect it to that side. Now, there's actually a, a clip that I've got, not right now, on this computer. I'm uh, doing this, this video blog on a, on a separate computer than, than the one that I've got the clip on, but there's a clip of him in the, in the NLDS this year against the Philadelphia Phillies where Ron actually scored because of the fact that his knee dropped first. He was unable to go any further or get around the ball any further, and the ball rocketed off to the side rather than him controlling it, keeping it you know, relatively close behind home plate. Um, and a lot of it had to do just with the order of which he put his knees down to the ground. And all of a sudden, you'll see this ball continue to kick off to his right. Now, of course, <laughs> this ball's going to stay close. He's going to be able to cradle this thing with that hand. But you'll notice the direction of the ball. It's going off to his right. And again, only 45, 50 miles an hour probably during this blocking drill. But you get that thing coming up at 85, 90, you know, plus 90 plus. That ball's not staying that close. It's rocketing off the chest protector off to the side. So now we'll go back to actually a block that he does this fairly well and makes the adjustment, makes the fix. Right around here. You notice hands leave first. You will clearly see right now that that, that left knee is down first. And you almost notice him pivot off of it as his pelvis shifts forward allows the, the, the right knee to drop to the ground. Now his chest is completely turned back towards home plate. Now, unfortunately, we don't get to see the, direct, the, the uh, direction of the ball, but assuming that he got, he got down to the ground before the ball hit him, that ball is going back towards home plate. So knee, left knee down to the ground first. Right knee rotates around, allows the chest to complete its turn back towards home plate. Again, our goal is to make sure that we've got the ability to keep this thing close. You've got Yadier Molina, one of the best defensive catchers of all time, and even he can do something a little bit better to control more of those pitches. Um, obviously, he's extremely good at this, um, certainly in live situations during the game, but even him, even he, can be better at this. So if any of those younger catchers um, at the youth levels or any of those high school catchers or any of those catchers in college right now are looking for a way to to control these these balls in the dirt just a little bit better because um, certainly any any out that we can steal over the course of a game is going to impact positively on our team and and certainly the the possible success that we can have um, during that game or during that season um, so you know, my, I'm, I'm always asking my catchers to look for another out see if you can find an out that the other team is giving you and try to take it if you can steal an out a game you've got the ability to affect the outcome um, that much greater, and certainly keeping a ball close and you know on a ball in the dirt that a runner wasn't expecting you to is is extremely useful. It is an extremely powerful tool um, when we can keep it close and then make a play on it. You know, the closer that ball is to our body, the easier it's going to be for me to get around it and make a play on it. So I do want to make sure that I've got the ability to to get my body around it, set, turn back towards home plate. Um, to get myself in a good, in a good, you know, athletic, powerful throwing position. If the ball's squirting off to the side, or you know, if we got someone throwing fairly hard and it's jetting off to the side, then regardless of, you know, I'm not even focusing right now on the runner at third base. That's important. I don't want that run to score. But, but you know, let's say that ball goes off to the side only four or five feet. The guy at third base is not scoring. He's not going to take off. But the runner on first base, he's on second. Um, whereas if we kept that ball within a hand's reach, we've got an opportunity to make the play. 
So again, our goal is to make sure that the inside knee, that the inside knee is what's heading to the ground first. And the inside knee is the knee to the opposite direction that we're going. So if we're going to our right right now, our left knee is the inside knee. If we're going to our left, obviously the, uh, uh, excuse me, um, you know, the right knee would be the, the inside knee. Um, right now his left, his right knee is the, is the outside knee and it is hitting the ground first. There's, our body's gonna attempt to stop its momentum you know, with all that, with all that energy heading in that direction, it's gonna be fairly tough. And all of a sudden, the ball is gonna hit off of our of our chest protector and go off to the side. That pitch is thrown hard; it's not staying in front. It's gonna it's gonna carry off to the side, and we're not gonna be able to control it or or, uh, or make a play on it. So, again, our goal is to make sure that the inside knee, the knee to the opposite direction that we are blocking, hits immediately after the glove. Now, to coaches, other players parents, fans in the stands, um, should they be able to see which knee hits the ground first? No. No, this is a bang, bang, bang sequence. Glove, inside knee, outside knee pulls around. That pelvis continues its turn to redirect the chest and the angle of the chest back towards the back of home plate. Um, but it's something that uh, us as catchers, if we take a look at, you know, if we put ourselves on video, um, and start analyzing whether or not that knee is actually hitting the ground first. If it's not, it, it, is a, it is a change we can make to better ourselves as catchers, to make us that much better in keeping balls close. Thank you guys for listening today. Uh, please feel free to uh, send me an email at jayatcatchingcamp.com if you guys have any uh, any questions about this video or any suggestions for videos in the future. Certainly, we're going we're gonna to continue rolling these out, um, you know, as much as I can. You know, this this time of the year is a busy travel season for us, but I'm going to do my best to continue uh, providing providing good information for you guys out there. So. Um, please like us on Facebook. It's facebookcom catchingcamp. Uh, you can find out how to win a spot, uh, a free spot at our summer camp um, this uh, this summer uh, by uh, by simply liking us on Facebook. Uh, to find out a little bit more about that, please head to our website at www.catchingcamp.com. Thanks, everybody.